Good morning, beautiful souls of planet Earth. <laughs> I am grateful to be here. I am so grateful to be here. I'm so blessed to be remembering exactly why I'm here and to shine that light for myself so I can feel that and accept that truth within and come into more self-unity. And as you come into that self-unity, a byproduct of that is realizing that there is no separation between I and you. So when I shine my light and choose my heart and come into more and more love <laughs> for myself, then that has a ripple effect on everyone else in this human and universal experience. So this morning, I had some extremely interesting information. If you're on live, say hello. Say where you're watching from. If this is your first live with me, I'd love to know. Um, be interactive. I love that about TikTok lives. I love the interactions. But this morning, actually, I'll start with yesterday. Yesterday, I couldn't get out of bed. I woke up. I've been setting my alarm at 4.50 a.m. I get up and I do two hours of, uh, we'll say, practice of um, shifting my consciousness into a space of full receiving of universal higher awareness. So I basically spend two hours. I try to spend two hours. <laughs> Sometimes my physical mind, brain, my actual physical body um, has a challenge with, with doing two hours of um, transcribing high frequencies, energy and vibration. It takes a lot out of the physical being. So the physical being is, is quite dense. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but we are. We're very we're dense because we're solid. That's the only way that we can have this physical experience is to have um, a level of density to our experience so that I am not merged with you and you can be your own unique individual self and I can be my own unique individual self. Um, so in that space, I... Um, <laughs> I find sometimes when I'm tapping into these really high frequencies and I don't know what dimension they are, but they are beyond star systems. So wherever that is in the universe, um, multi-dimensional beyond it, I've been told it's just ineffable intelligence and ineffable is beyond words. It's too, too expansive. There's no verbal communication for that. Um, for that <laughs> and and I think it's a great word so look it up in the dictionary I loved it when I found it and <laughs> um yeah well I didn't find it it was given to me anyway <clears throat> so the physical side of this is is been a little bit challenging which is why I'm on a uh, strict sleeping eating exercising sort of routine but yesterday morning my alarm went off and I couldn't physically get out of bed I was so exhausted and I was super exhausted. Um, my throat was itchy and sore. My eyes were sore. Everything was sore. <laughs> and I ended up, um, the only time I got out of bed was to make a chamomile and honey tea and then to eat some food. And then I went back to bed and I slept. And I was like, fuck, I've got COVID. Like, I've got COVID. <laughs> no, I went all this time without getting COVID and I've got COVID. Because I am, if you haven't already made that assumption, um, non-vaxxed. And so I was like, damn it. All right, I've got COVID. Um, which, is, which is totally cool, right? I was all right. I was like, okay, seven days of rest. Obviously, I got COVID for a reason. And I just accepted the COVID thing. Anyway, during my sleep, I, um, 
I was having crazy hectic psychedelic dreams and downloads and my mind and like awarenesses and visions and all the things and that I mean that's not really that normal for me actually during um I guess sleep or rest I get a lot of my downloads in waking life um or that I'm aware of (laughs) and I um woke up this morning with my alarm no I didn't I woke up at 3 50 a.m and I was like get up it's time to go back and do do all the things you've got an agreement or a mission a purpose here to keep um stepping into and and showing up for so that was really um interesting because I got up and I was like okay wide awake at 4 a.m still got a slightly scratchy throat but my head is clear well, it wasn't. When I first woke up, it wasn't clear. Then I did two hours of, of um, downloading. And that is what I'm here to share. Or some of it. Because I don't know how much of it is actually going to be able to be received. So after the, t- after the downloading, headaches gone. Nothing. I'm awake, vibrant, excited. I don't believe I have COVID. <laughs> which is a relief, right? Um, which is awesome because yesterday I did a little TikTok about it and I, I asked, I was like, all right, let's see if I can transcribe some higher information. You tell me what it is about physical illness as to why it manifests. If everything's a mind, a manifestation of thought, then what was the thought that creates it? And the information I got about why I was sick was because I came to a higher truth that I wasn't willing to accept and I was resisting stepping into what I already knew was true. So it's like when you know something but you don't allow yourself to be in the knowing because of conditioning or belief systems. So that caused contrast in the energetic frequency and vibration which manifested into a physical uh, incongruency (laughs) to show me what... um, was required I suppose allow that space for me to actually step into more of what I actually know was true and let go of the conditioning which is probably exactly what purging is <laughs> but um so this morning let's just get into it right this morning's um information uh one of the big pieces that like Uh, So as I'm receiving this information, I often, I have to listen to it back as I type it up into my book. Um, And it's usually the typing up that it really solidifies it into my own um, beingness because as I'm receiving it, it's quite challenging to receive and absorb and analyze or or embody it um, because I'm kind of just the vessel. So it's like the information just flows through rather than me receiving it and being able to hold it and, and, and um, sit with it. So what did really sit with, with this morning was <laughs> that um, I asked around anxiety and I don't remember the question that led up before anxiety, but um, anxiety is literally only... A humanoid condition so if you don't know what a humanoid is guess what I'm gonna enlighten you um, <laughs> a humanoid is a, um, a, a a being that's here that looks as of human uh, physical vessel experience or or it looks as a human only they have altered DNA. So they are that of um, stars. They've been here before. So they're in inca- in- in incarnated into the physical representation with altered DNA. So their physical vessel is different to a human's physical vessel. Which is why so many humanoids have really interesting, super interesting little physical things that they actually have a lot of shame about, right? So there's some shame because they might have like, um, I don't know, like a slightly weird toe 
or um, their rib cage at the bottom of their rib, rib cage might stick out or um, <clears throat> they have different abnormalities, I guess, or, or quirks about their physical body. Um, if you got their DNA um, tested, most of them would have abnormal, not most, <laughs> I'm not even going to say most. If you got their DNA tested on humanoids, there are, um, I guess, chromosome and abnormalities in the DNA structure. So you can see it and um, in, in, in the science of the physical vessel. A lot of humanoids also have the Reese's negative, um, like a I'm an O negative, um, what do you call that, uh, the blood type. So that is considered, some people have called it alien alien DNA or alien blood. So I don't use the word alien. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. Um, but basically the universe has come in souls that were of higher intelligence or um, more universal understanding have come into physical form to help shift and change the collective consciousness on earth. <clears throat> now, anxiety um, is a manifestation only to the humanoid people on the planet. So humans specifically don't actually receive anxiety, which I'm still trying to find, I still find this quite challenging to understand. So people that are hu hu uh, humanoid have um what happens is they have a um activated physical vessel so their physical vessel is extrasensory or sensitive so their senses and their dna and their cells and their mo mo atoms and molecules are already activated their physical body is activated and what happens is because they've got come into this reality with a physically activated body, which means they have heightened senses in sight, smell, um, perceiving energy, taste, touch, so that their senses are all heightened, they don't have a mind that knows how to interpret that because the mind goes into conditioning and separation and most of us don't have parents that have an understanding of why they're here on this planet um whether or not they're human or humanoid most people are unconscious from from any remembering of unity or or god consciousness and what happens is the mind, the separate mind, doesn't know how to interpret all of the feeling body. So that creates anxiety. So anxiety is an incongruency where the perceiving of mind and the perceiving of body are not um, in alignment with each other. So any, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't know about you, <laughs> but to me, I was like, of course. I mean, I had already... Um, from my own observations, seeing that everyone I work with who has anxiety is super sensory. And I'd already like just observed that with the people that I work with and their energetic system that, oh yeah, right, people that suffer anxiety are just super, super tuned in and tapped in. Same with people with ADHD and all of these other labels and conditions of trying to understand a certain personality type. Now, I'm not sure how long psychology has been around in um, our history um, when it comes down to the behaviour of a human being, but um, a lot of these conditions and these things that we're trying to label and box people into are ways to continue the separation and the wrongness of the being that's in, in the body and the vessel so that it keeps them from actually activating and being in alignment with their potential rather than um, teaching them how to use it. Because what happens um, is that the potential of the physical human vessel 
like this physical vessel, you have no fucking clue how amazing your body is. Like none. You don't, you haven't even like opened the doorway to see that crack of light, to see the potential of the human body. Um, the human body is a very advanced piece of creation, like super advanced. The human body is like, if you could think of the most advanced piece of, um, technology (laughs) that is on the current earth that we live in, our body is that times a godzillion. (laughs) Um, and if we teach or if we help the mind remember that, then um, if we help the mind remember that potential, then there, there's no control, okay? You can't control humans. You can't control the collective consciousness because they realise how infinitely amazing they are. And I'm not just talking about, like, te- telepathic thought. I'm talking about healing capacity. I'm talking, um, like... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know because I haven't even, I only know my own experience of the potential of my body um, and what I've created in this physical experience to do with this, this amazing piece of amazingness um, when I see it because I've been at, able to unlock that part within myself where I've let go of my own human conditioning so that I can be a clear vessel. And when that happens... Basically, if you get to a point of understanding that your conditioning is stopping the potential of your physical, so you can directly manifest with thought. So your thought will manifest into physical reality like that, right? That is, we are all Jesus, all right? That's probably the best way to describe it. What Jesus was able to do, he was just one human or humanoid, Um, that tapped into that potential to help humanity understand what is available when you remember God and when you come into unity consciousness. Um, So the, the beauty of that is that if you are one of those people that has been limited and been put into a box of a condition, you know, like if someone said that you've got autism or you've got Asperger's or Tourette's or, um, you know, uh, ADHD or um, <laughs> bipolar, it's a good one, um, borderline personality, all of these mental conditions are far greater to understand the concept. It's just because there is an incongruency with truth and the energetics, the mind and the body connection. So the mind-body connection is what's um, basically disrupted. And when that mind-body connection is disrupted, it's not manageable in this reality because you're in a dense 3D reality. And the physical, I guess the vibrational frequency that you're receiving is extremely, extremely high. And unless you have a perception um, of the mind understanding what's being received, it will come out in some sort of mental condition or mental disorder. Um, Like what you're saying, schizophrenia. schizophrenia is a lie now my brother so this is this is huge for me because my brother has drug-induced psychosis according to this reality now had i have known all of these things (laughs) many years ago you know many 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 years ago i would have understand i would understand that the information he received was just far far more than he was physically able to um come into conscious understanding of and that's what created the me- mental illness you know basically you've give you have tapped into an information source that is far beyond what you're ready to accept as a reality and that creates the disconnect um, and it's, it's, 
I know how I know how challenging it is to hear these things. I know how challenging it is to hear these things because it is so beyond what we are taught. It is so far outside of the box of what truth or what our reality has or what we've been conditioned to believe is our reality. And the only way to actually find truth is to feel it. And I will continue to say it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You have to feel truth. Truth is not a mind concept. Something that is true, universally true, and then you have true to the perspective believer will change. Um, so your truth is your truth. And that is, I, I actually saw a TikTok on it yesterday by, ba- um, I think he calls himself Basher. And so I've been given the information that I'm um, a conduit to universal truth. So I, at, at some point in my human experience, I will be, <sighs> God, I will be, um, communicating, um, I will be doing Q and A's basically. I'll be doing, doing Q and A's where I tap into this information source. Um, somebody asks a question and the information that is given is going to be, um, that of universal truth. And I'm the vessel to, express that through to um, something that is understandable in the human language. Now, Basha is is of similar um, <clears throat> work. So I don't know his history, but from what I'm perceiving from his energy, he is channeling a being or beings, I'm not really sure, which means he's um, what he's tapping into is um, actually still in the universal star system. So he's some form of star seed, whereas um, the information that I'm receiving is beyond the star constellations. So if you've heard the concept of creator gods, um, wherever they come from, <laughs> is the energetic vibration and frequency that I've been able to um, connect into, which is challenging for the human mind to come to acceptance of. of. Um, But basically, I just jumped onto my TikTok and he had a TikTok that was saying, um, someone asked the question of what is the, what is the highest universal truth? And his answer was that all truths are true. And I giggled because I get it. And he's like, your truth, your individual truth at that time is true. And my individual truth, although it may be completely different to your truth, is also true. Because as each person evolves on their journey, their truth shifts and change and comes, it depends where their mind sits, right? You've got universal truth or or God-like consciousness mind, and then you have separate mind. And the distance between that is how your truth will change over time. Your truth will feel true depending on the gap basically the gap um and the closer you come into unity consciousness um the more that you realize that there is uh i guess there's one (laughs) no one says there's people say there aren't such thing as an absolute truth i disagree with that that's my truth (laughs) my truth is there is an absolute truth um and I've sat with it a lot over the last couple of years of like, am I decepting myself? Maybe I am. But no, I truly believe that there is an absolute truth and the absolute truth is there is one God, creator, source um, of all things and that we are a separate um, representation in whatever form throughout the galaxy universe um, of that and basically that the entire understanding of truth is that we are um we go into points of separation and then into unity and separation and into unity in the infinity symbol so the infinity symbol is is at this point my best interpretation of what truth is in in some some form of physical understanding um or (laughs) language um because we have so much word in this experience to explain what can only be felt. And that is absolute truth. The truth of something that you can't actually verbally communicate. 
it's a feeling. And when you felt it, you know it. And that's it. That's the truth. Um, but <clears throat> what he was also saying was, was co completely accurate. You know, your truth is no different or untrue than my truth, which even though they are different, it doesn't make them wrong. Uh, which is the beauty of of, <laughs> of this cosmic joke. <laughs> um, so that was one of the other sort of pieces there. But um, I also received quite a bit of information around um, the percentage of, of humans to humanoids and the understanding of the amount of unconscious humanoids. So we're unconsciously creating from our agreements, which causes a lot of chaos um, in the human experience and the physical representation of that because if you have an agreement to something that's um, an agreement with God, with Creator, to why you're here on Earth and you don't remember and you're coming from a place of conditioning and human trauma, then you're only adding to the separation and you're not actually able to come into a place of um, unification, whether or not you are for that. Or not now one of these super interesting things um, for people that are able to receive this is that um, the percentage of humanoids now I've never sat with this I, I um, the percentage of humanoids oh I've got somebody awake so I'm gonna finish this up in a second but the percentage of humanoids there are more um, will say humanoids for anti-consciousness on this planet than there is humanoids for unity consciousness or love. Now that in me was a challenging thing to receive <clears throat> um, in itself, but I think also is shown in the current human condition and the consciousness space that there are um, definitely there's definitely more separation within thought than there is unity in thought and the amount of unconscious humanoid reptilians that are running around as to why there is so many fucked up things happening in this reality because if you can conceive the perspective of somebody who has an agreement to keep humanity conditioned and of anti-consciousness so sh darkness is lack of information that's all right so darkness is lack of information so if you have a being that comes into this human experience with their agenda to be to create more lack of information but they're doing it unconsciously that um can come up in some pretty fucking horrific experiences, which is what explains a lot of um, the unperceivable or unconceivable things that are happening on the planet. Um, is, is that um, so? Either way, whether or not you're coming from a place of um, consciously remembering your agreements or unconsciously just depends on how you are driven in life so an unconscious <clears throat> light worker or star seed or earth angel or whatever label you want to put on yourself an unconscious um one of those is going to be driven from the concept of love the only thing is the concept of love comes from the human conditioning of love which means they're going to be wrapped up in the love of romance or people or kids or whatever it is that's actually disconnecting them from the true one love of source creator so that in itself continues the divide in separation in thought so it actually doesn't add to the mission of coming into more consciousness until they awaken and remember. So none of this is, is, is really helpful until somebody remembers why they're here, until they awaken their eyes, until they see past the matrix. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to look at the questions um, just because I am going to the farmer's market. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoy this um, little... <laughs> 
interesting piece of information. I will download it and put it onto YouTube if you want to rewatch it and sit with some of the messages or share it with anyone. Thank you for, um, <clears throat> I, I am looking after myself, I promise. I have, I have no choice. I have to. <laughs> it's part of my agreement. <laughs> Um, by the way, free will doesn't exist once you remember your agreements. <laughs> free will is a concept for humanity. Um, I would say free will is not really, um, and that's probably why a lot of people are in suffering as well. If you have an awareness that you are of the stars or the universe or somewhere else, and you feel trapped and you feel like you don't have choice and you feel I guess a lot of victimization from from that you don't feel freedom it's because you don't really have any choice here you have a choice to keep your agreement to creator or you have a choice to go against what you agreed and when you go against creator um there's a lot of suffering so really you don't have any choice you just got to accept it. I love you. Have a beautiful day.